Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Cube Monster by Crazy Box. This is a two to four player game that takes roughly 45 minutes to an hour for ages 13 and up. In the game Cube Monster, you are playing in this cube world where you need to rise to the top of your ranks. You're being set off by one of your villages and your objective is to feed this monster while of course building up your civilization. You'll be building factories, temples, markets, shrines, and even statues. And if you can build the most structures to utilize them to gain you more cubes, to move up this cube structure and get to the very top, you win. By the end of the game, if this triggers first, whoever is the farthest along on the map is the winner as well. Let's go into how you set the game up, how to play, and of course my review. When setting up the game Cube Monster, the first thing you'll do is you'll take the main game board and place it within reach of all players. Each player is going to choose a character, and each character is going to come along with a board. Place the characters on the number one cube on the board. Take these cube cards and place them from left to right with the four different decks, the red, purple, two cube, and three cube decks. Then place the reward decks after shuffling them with green, purple, and yellow on the right hand side. Finally, you'll take the disaster deck, shuffle it up, and place it on the top left hand side of the board, and the main game board is done. Each player board is going to come with that character that I explained, as well as two unique factories based on the number of players. You'll put these little factory statues uh, in stacks of three in the area that says factories. You're also going to take three free cubes from the bag and place it on the free cube space. Up to a max of six is how many can be there. And that's all you need for your board. Take one of your player reference cards and set the main die that you'll be using for offerings aside along with the bag of extra cubes. The final thing you'll need is the monster board. All you're going to do is take two uh, plus the number of players cubes and place it in this feeding box here and then you're ready to begin the game. Playing the game Cube Monster is simple. All you're going to do is start with a player and they are the feeder. That player is going to choose one of the cubes in the feeding area and feed it to the monster. When you feed any cube to the monster, you must place it on a space that has the color of the cube. So in this example, I have a teal cube. I will place the teal cube in a teal space. After I have fed the monster, I will check if I need to make tribute. Every time you feed the monster, you need to see if you must tribute. To tribute, you're going to basically have to look and see if a row or a column or a diagonal has been filled. And if that has been filled, you will remove those cubes and then you are going to have to make tribute. You will roll the tribute die and based on the number on that die, uh, plus any bonuses that you might have to have on this little cube statue track, you will take that many cubes of different colors from your free cubes area and remove them. If you can't do that, you'll draw a disaster card and everybody who is affected by that is going to have to be affected by the card. Everybody else will just simply feed by putting those cubes back into the bag, meaning you're going to lose resources whenever this happens. If you don't have to make a tribute, or after you make a tribute, then the player to the left going clockwise of the player who is feeding will take one of the cubes and put it into their free zone. And then, after you've taken a cube, you can choose to do anything available on your board. Any building that you have access to, based on how far along you are on this track here, uh, you can build. And each of the buildings have a unique building requirement. Uh, the marketplace requires one of each color. Factory, factories require three cubes of one color. Shrines are two of one. The temple is going to be all four cubes of different colors, along with one cube of your choice on the top. And then statues are like two by twos, but set in a diagonal. If you want to build any of those, or if you can, of course, you can choose to do so. Otherwise, the other choice that you have is you can choose to also uh, move from one space to the next uh, in the cube area, but you may only do this once every turn. I'll explain how the buildings work and how moving works probably in my review, but just as an idea that uh, after you've taken a cube, you can either build buildings on your board that you're available to do so, or you can move up once on this track here. Then the next player will get to choose a cube and place it in their free cubes area. And we'll just choose this one here. And then finally, the last cube remaining is going to go onto the track for the number of rounds in the game. There's a total of 16 rounds, and after the 16th cube has been placed, that will end the game. If you put a cube of the color required on that space, so for instance, this is a purple cube, if this was a purple cube here, the feeder would choose one cube of his or her choice and place it down into an area on the feeding board here. 
and then you would go ahead and rinse and repeat. The next player would become the feeder. You would take two plus the number of players worth of cubes and place it out. And then that player is going to go ahead and feed the monster. The next player is going to grab a cube, build anything that they want, or move up on the track here. Next player will do the same. And finally, the last cube will go onto the space. Once this hits 16, the game is over, and you're going to check to see who's farthest along on this track here. And of course, if somebody reaches the up top track before anybody else, the very end of this round, you will check to see if that player is the highest person, and if so, they win. If there's a tie, however, they're going to check to see whoever has the most of these cards here. And the way you're gonna get these cards is whenever you move up on the track here, you are going to be able to gather cards based on if you meet the requirements. So if you have more cards of these than any other player, you're going to win in the tie. And if there's still a tie, it's gonna be the person who has the most cubes on their board. And that's the basic idea of how to play Cube Monster. We'll get into some of the details and my review now. So before we get into my full review of the game, let's talk about a few unique things that I wanted to discuss. One thing being moving up on this track. Now you know that you can only move up once a turn and only after you've chosen a cube. But another interesting thing about this is as you move up, it's going to have a requirement. The cost is on the top of each of the cubes that you want to move to. So the first space is free. Going to the next space will cost a teal and a purple. The next space is going to be a yellow, a red, and a purple, and so on and so forth. And once you trigger getting to that end space here, you're going to basically win the game as, well as, as long as nobody else reaches there at the same round. Additionally, uh, on the right hand top side of the cube, it'll tell you what buildings that you are allowed to build. And currently at the start, you can only build factories and statues. But as you move up, you're going to be able to build the marketplace and shrines. And then finally, you can build the temple. Additionally, each time you move up, you're going to receive a reward card. Reward cards are different colors, and they're going to give you tricks, upgrades, and cubes. Yellow are cubes, which are basically going to give you bonus cubes of different colors or colors of your choice. Upgrades are cards that you can go ahead and stick on the sides of your player board, affecting certain types of buildings that you have, whether it be a temple upgrade, a marketplace upgrade, a factory upgrade, so on and so forth. And of course, you can upgrade a space more than once if you would like and if you can. And finally, tricks. Tricks are basically things that will affect your opponents, uh, help you in ways that your opponents might have gotten help, etc, etc. So for instance, you can choose a cube from the cube pit that no one can take during this round. It can be the one placed on the track or at the, it will be the one placed on the track. So okay, I don't want Callie to get a purple cube, so I'll make sure that that cube is going to be staying there by playing this card and thusly being placed on here and allow me to maybe use it to feed the monster with. Um, and that's how all these guys work. Disasters. If you have to make tribute to the monster and you can't, you'll draw one of these guys and each player who also can't will have to do whatever this says. Like for instance, the monster takes three cubes of a single color from each player. First, give three cubes, fulfill the rest of the punishment by destroying structures in full. So if you have to destroy a structure because you need one more cube of purple and your structure has three purple, you'll lose that entire structure. It's damaging, it's dangerous, disasters are gnarly. They're scary to, to deal with. Let's talk about some buildings too. Uh, buildings, which are pretty cool as well. You're gonna have statues when you build them. You'll receive the benefit reward of the type in which you build it in. Um, and in addition, whenever you tribute to the monster, you'll get a card for each statue that you have based on where they're located. So if I had a yellow and a purple statue, then I would be able to take a yellow and a purple card each time I had to feed the beast and when I place them down. Marketplace is gonna let you do a two to one trade as opposed to the average three to one trade. If I had three purple cubes, I could just simply trade them on my turn after taking a cube for any cube I want. If I have the marketplace, it'll just be a two to one. The temple is going to give me a unique um, ability to basically gather more cubes of a chosen color based on the one I choose on top. And factories kind of do the same thing in a way. Factories are a little bit less powerful, but when you draw a certain cube from the pit here, if you have a factory or factories of that color, you'll get extra cubes of that type from the bag. And then shrines will allow you to use a color of the shrine's color to Feed the beast. If you only have two red and you roll the die and it's a two, you'll need two of each different color. But with shrines, it'll basically let you use that red as an extra color, which is nice as well. 
And that's basically the idea for most of the buildings. And I didn't describe them all perfect detail, but I think you have an idea that they're basically going to allow you to assist you in getting, getting more cubes, diversifying your cubes, and of course upgrades doing the same thing, giving you the ability to make your buildings even more unique and even better throughout the game. Some spaces on here are also going to be able to allow you to allow you. Um, when you roll the feed the monster die, if you're on the fourth space, this is a plus one. So instead of a two like everybody else, because you're on the higher space, you're going to actually have a three, meaning three unique different types of cubes. And then at the five, it's plus two. So if you roll a nasty three, it's gonna be five cubes, which is pretty deadly and devastating. If you get a six though, you just simply win, so it doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. That's all, all of it. So let's talk about uh, my full thoughts on all of these details now. Um, this is a puzzler, it's kind of an engine builder, and it utilizes cubes in basically all aspects. You're going to use cubes as the round markers, well, what you do for buildings, and, and how you build them as well, and then your free resources are what going to be cubes, um, how you feed the monster will be cubes, and where you're going to be gathering from, as well as even just the spaces that you're going to be moving up on this little cube Cubio, Cubia, I don't remember the exact name of the location you're at, but it's, it's a cube temple. If you can get to the top, then you win, right? Uh, and that works really well, actually. Be having to basically take these resources and then use them as little building blocks and how you build them will affect not only what types of cards you get um, at certain points in the game, but also the type of buildings that you can choose to build. Your resources matter more as to what types of buildings that you have more than what other players get most of the time, but you have to be aware of what they have in order to stop them from getting ahead of you. If they're drawing more cubes than you, they're beating you most of the time unless you can diversify by getting unique different cubes of different colors to help you build buildings faster. Moving on this track is the most important thing, and basically there are two main ways to win this game. One is brute force, and the other is slow, concise building that will eventually let you become a snowball rolling downhill. The snowball rolling downhill is building the correct buildings that you need in the spaces that you want to gather the cards and resources that you need as you're feeding and gathering from the monster pit. And the brunt force effect is gathering the cubes that you need based on the colors of the next upgrade space and using the cards that you get in order to help you get to the very, very top. Because at the end of the game, all that matters is being at the top before anybody else. If they have a lot more resources or a lot more buildings, it doesn't matter. But if they're able to get there at the same time as you or the game ends by getting to the 16 spot with you guys in the same space, then of course it comes down to those cards, which you'll need to fulfill certain requirements in order to get them, like two factories, a purple and a yellow, and then two shrines, a purple and a yellow. That'll get you two cubes of your choice, and it's gonna help you in ties as well. And so those cards can be very useful when moving up this track here to see if you get those cards. And there's a variety of cards that you can get. And the longer you wait, the more likely you'll be able to get more of those cards that will help you progress and help you win ties. Each of the unique rewards is very powerful, very unique. Yellow ones is what I would suggest if you learn to play the beginner mode, as well as, of course, if you're going to start by building anything, it probably should be either factories or yellow statues, because those will give you more cubes, and you'll get more cubes whenever you have to utilize them by feeding the monster or tributing from the monster. Uh, each of the unique miniatures are nice. The characters don't have unique abilities, which kind of would have been cool in my opinion. They don't, they're just basically different characters for the different boards here. Um, but I don't think they have any unique abilities or different factories. I think if each one of them had a factory that functioned just a little bit differently in their own way, that would have been nice. But we'll see what the Kickstarter provides when it's out. But the miniatures are excellent, high quality, and they look really cool for this game. The cubes are high quality as well. They're big and easy to see. You know what's going on, what the cubes are, and the differentiation between colors is nice as well. How you read the board works fairly well, and how you set the game up is nice and easy. If you like a puzzler, if you like a light engine builder, and a little bit of strategy mixed in with this monster feeding type game, you're going to dig Cube Monster. I played this game the first time when we played it was on a live stream, and I played it a few times after because I wanted to play the higher player counts. I had fun on the live stream, but I got stomped, and that's because I didn't really, really realize how important A, the statues are, and making sure you get those cube cards. And as you play the game, you'll start to acknowledge and understand the different points of interest and what you need to start doing, as opposed to doing some kind of variant strategy, which is what I always try and do to break the game, which usually ends up in me losing. So, uh, follow Callie. Uh, 
uh, strategies when playing games like these, in my opinion. <laughs> Overall, it's an excellent game. High quality artwork, nice quality pieces, cool miniatures, and it's a puzzler, which means basically all the gals that I know enjoy playing this type of a game. I like this type of a game, I just have to not mind losing so much, but overall it is a very satisfying experience and something pretty unique and different that I haven't played before. If you're interested, there's a link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Cube Monster. If you're interested in picking up a game like I said before, you know where to go. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe bell button notification. It really helps us so you can see more videos coming out every single day, Monday to Friday, as much as I possibly can. And of course, our live stream on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST. If you're interested in the website, the website unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, extra lists, and more. And nextly is our game we're producing uh, mid to early next year, Zero Day, which we'll talk about more in the upcoming months. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to getting to the top of the cube tower without you next time.